So hear me out, hockey fans. I know this is predominantly a prospect channel and sometimes even a Habs channel, but not anymore. Today, we are broadening our horizons. I like to think that I'm open-minded and that I can put aside my biases to come up with a clear and honest evaluation. So as a hockey fan, I felt like the Leafs deserve some attention. Their situation is unique in the way that they have a team with mad skills and some of the best players in the NHL, but can't seem to crack the code. So let's see if this year is finally the year. So the Toronto Maple Leafs technically made the playoffs in eight consecutive years if we count the qualification loss in 2020. So there's no denying the Leafs are a high-end team in the NHL. The issue is that seven times out of those eight years, they did not make it past the first round. If I'm not mistaken, they are tied with the Bruins for the most consecutive playoffs appearance as of last season's playoff. That's not nothing. And I gotta give credit where credit is due. Outside of their first year back to the playoff after a long rebuild, they brought every single series to seven. They were one game away, sometimes even one period away from moving on six times out of those seven losses. Obviously, seven losses and eight opportunities doesn't sound really good, but knowing that they brought it to the very edge on almost every single occasion is very positive to me and definitely something to build on. As I was looking into this, one of the things that struck me the most and what I believe to be a major differentiator between their season performance and playoffs performance is their ability to score goals. But when I talk with hockey fans from around the league, the thing that come up the most is how the Leaf can defend, which isn't exactly true. Well, not that it's not true, but their defense pretty much stays the same whether they play regular season matches or playoff matches. Over the span of eight years, which is when the Leafs started making the playoff, they are 17th in the league with exactly three goals against per games played, which is pretty much middle of the pack, considering that 30 teams made the playoff in that time span. So how does it compare to their regular season numbers? It's almost identical. Over the same time period, they are 17th in the league with two 2.94 goals again so it's safe to say that their defense contrary to most people's belief did their job but when you compare that to their offense over the same time period they are first in the entire nhl with 3.43 goals per game in the regular season but they go all the way down to 21st out of 30 teams in the playoffs with 2.63 goals per game which is almost a whole goal per game difference and the same goes for their special teams the leafs are third in the nhl with 24.1 percent success rate on the power play with over 600 games played but they're 28th in the playoffs with 16.9%. On the PK, they go from 12 with over 80% to 28 with 74%. I did the same exercise for other playoff team with a long history of making the playoffs, but with more success than the Leaf and found out that teams like Colorado, Boston and Tampa, when they play in the playoffs, their strength stays at the same level or even improve sometimes, while their middle of the pack stats also stay around where they were in their regular season. They don't have large discrepancies between their playoffs and regular season stats. The largest jump from those teams is Tempest PK, who went from 5th to 18 in the playoffs, but with only 1.7% difference while everything else stayed about the same. There was no 24% to 16% jump on the power play. There was no 3.4 goals per game to 2.6 goals per game jump. So this seems to be something to work on. When it comes to the roster, I think they have a very, very well-rounded roster with size, tons of skills, energy players, and straight up nastiness with Reeves. They didn't have too many departures that would hurt the team, if any really. Brody, who signed in Chicago, was nowhere near as good as he once was. And Tyler Bertuzzi, who also signed in Chicago, was a good, hardworking offensive player with very below average defense, who can be replaced by Nick Robertson or Max Pacioretty if, by some miracle, they don't implode by the fourth game of the season. We all know that the Matthews, Marner, and Nice line will most likely be one of the best line in the NHL again, but that third line of Robertson and Pacioretty and Holmberg could very well be a great third line for the Maple Leafs. And me, personally, I was always a big believer in Robertson. I had him in my top 20 in 2019. And if he can stay healthy, which is a big if, I know that the guy can really score and create offense out of nothing. Defense will never be a strength, that's for sure. But if given the chance, like 
more than 11 minutes a night or 40 seconds on the power play, I think he can really surprise people. But overall, with an elite top six, a good third line and a solid fourth line of Camp, Lawrence and Reeves, they seem to have a good mix of element up front to go deep in the playoff. Defensively, in their top four, they basically traded Brody for Tanev, which is a big win in my book, maybe not with that horrendous contract, but at the very minimum is an upgrade on Brody for the next couple of years. They also upgraded from Giordano to Oliver ekman Larson. Again, that contract is a bit rich and ekman Larson is in the player he once was, but he was very solid alongside Kulikov and Forsling in Florida last season. But anyway, put it any way you want it, it's still an upgrade. So overall, with Riley and Tanev as a solid first pair, a mix of ekman Larson, maybe Lilligren, I don't know if there is Camp, and Jake McCabe on the second line, and a revolving door of Timmins, Hackenpa, and B. Noit on the third. It's solid. I'm also guessing that at some point in the season, they'll give Topi Numila a chance to show what he can do at the NHL level. So while not the best and deepest group of defensemen out there, nobody can say that this is a weak defensive group. And on the goaltending side of things, I think they have a very, very solid duo. Stolarz was fantastic last season in Florida, but was playing behind one of the best defensive team in the NHL. And Joseph Wall is slowly becoming a good goaltender. They're both good to very good to maybe even excellent, but that's not a lot of experience for a team that's trying to make a deep push into the playoff. They both never cracked the 30 game mark in a season. So it's a bit of a gamble. It's definitely a calculated gamble, but it's a gamble nonetheless. So. Not everybody will agree with this, but some like me will say that they have a very solid roster. It's elite at the top with decent depth at the bottom, good non-flashy defense and some potential in net. Others will say it's not deep enough or the goaltending is too much of a question mark or even the defense is too questionable. We all have different opinions and it's okay that way, but I'm sure that all biases aside, we can all agree this is a playoff team. There's no questions about it. But the issue with the Leafs was never to get to the playoffs. It was always to find that extra mental toughness to get through that dreaded game seven. They have the necessary talent on the team, no question, but they gotta let go of the curse. They need accountability. They need adaptability. They need to be the hardest team to play against every single night. They can't be caught sleeping on the ice with Pasternak speeding down the wing in a do or die game seven overtime. It just can't happen and expect to develop a winning mentality. If they really wanna win, they gotta want it more than the other team and it starts with the players themselves but they also need the right driver behind the bus and that guy is Craig Berube. Sheldon Keefe was a good coach who played to the strength of the team focusing on tempo, skills, puck control with more of a player's approach but he was never very adaptable and there was basically zero accountability. It was the star player's team, not his team. Craig is the polar opposite of that. He's a lot more old school, focused on grinding down teams with physicality, a strong forechecking, hard-nosed hockey, with a huge emphasis on defense as a team. He keeps players accountable and he will drill mental toughness into their heads night after night. And honestly, as a Habs fan, he's exactly the type of coach I absolutely didn't want the Leafs to get. He's a smart coach, but he's a tough coach, exactly like the missing pieces for the Leaf, in my opinion. A coach like, let's say, Daryl Sutter, for example, probably would have been a little bit too much for the Leafs with a very short shelf life and basically zero roster adaptability whatsoever. Berube is somewhat similar in style, but crossed with a little bit more offensive fluidity, a bit like Paul Morris, for example. And if there's one coach that can teach Marner to play playoff style hockey, it's going to be Berube. And if Marner learns to play harder and more direct in the playoff, couple that with Matthews and Nylander and Nyes and Riley and Tanev, they're going to be impossible to stop. So is this the year? Yeah, I think this is the year. And when I say that, I don't mean it like get past the first round. They already did that. I mean more like get past that mental blockage and get past that fear of game seven and actually have a real deep run. In my opinion, they have the roster and now they have the driver to get them there. And honestly, I really don't want it to happen but I think that it will happen. I think they will be a serious contender and do a ton of damage in the playoffs. On this, thanks for watching. Peace.